So last week on the show, I talked about a scandal involving AT&T where they were basically caught red-handed funding fake activism for a phony net neutrality protection law where they had, I don't know if it was bots, basically tweeting at politicians telling them to not support the CRA resolution to nullify the FCC's vote of net neutrality, which is what we want. They're saying, no, support our bill instead. Now, what they're not saying is that their bill doesn't actually protect net neutrality. The Congressional Review Act, which is what we're all pushing for, that would actually save net neutrality because Congress does have the authority to pass a resolution nullifying the FCC's vote. And that's what we want them to do. But basically, what they did was they funded activism so people would tweet at politicians and say, well, no, 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 we support net neutrality. We need net new law now and support our bill instead. That was all bullshit. So we learned a little bit more about this scandal and have an update to the story because the plot thickens a little bit. Because, of course, as we could have predicted, AT&T wasn't acting alone. They had an ally, and that ally was a Democratic Party think tank known as the Progressive Policy Institute. Now, before I get to the article here that talks about this, let me just say that it's time that they rename themselves, because if you're pushing for a law that doesn't save net neutrality, if you're trying to prevent us from making progress, you're not a Progressive Policy Institute. You're a Regressive Policy Institute, because there's nothing more regressive than going back on progress we already made with regard to net neutrality. I mean, Title II was a landmark decision because we've been fighting for net neutrality since we had the internet, and finally, that signified a day where we got what we wanted. It was classified as a common carrier under the Communications Act of 1934. We got that. And now you're saying that you don't want that, so you're not progressive at all. You're regressive. You're trying to take us backwards. But getting to the article, Paul Blumenthal of HuffPost reports, a Democratic Party think tank is behind a shadowy social media campaign pressuring Democratic lawmakers to oppose congressional resolutions to bring back net neutrality rules. In the past two weeks, individual Democratic Party lawmakers have received Twitter messages from hundreds of different users urging them to oppose two resolutions that would nullify the Federal Communications Commission's December vote to end net neutrality rules for internet service providers. Democrats, digital companies, and open internet advocates have harshly criticized the FCC's decision. The Twitter messages encouraged lawmakers to drop their support of the resolutions, which were offered under the Congressional Review Act, and to pass a bipartisan net neutrality bill instead, something that does not exist at this moment. But rather than an organic expression of policy preferences by disparate Twitter users, the wave of messages started as an online advertising campaign by the Progressive Policy Institute. Institute, a centrist think tank affiliated with the Democratic Party that has consistently opposed net neutrality regulations imposed by the FCC. Lindsey Mark Lewis, executive director of the Progressive Policy Institute, told HuffPost that the advocacy campaign is meant to target pragmatic members of Congress in a pursuit of a real legislative solution to net neutrality. Lewis called the Doyle and Marquis bills nothing but a gesture without a solution. The Progressive Policy Institute has a history of bending over backwards to do whatever large phone and cable companies ask it to do. Tim Carr, a senior director at Free Press, a pro-net neutrality nonprofit group, told HuffPost. Now, a quick point of clarification here. The executive director of the Progressive Policy Institute said that the bills from Doyle and Marquis were, quote, nothing but a gesture without a solution. The opposite is true. I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. The bills that he's referring to are the actual bills that would nullify the FCC's repeal of net neutrality. So it's the solution we need. It's a bill that Ed Marquis sponsored in the Senate, which now has 50 co-sponsors. And it's a bill that Doyle co-sponsored in the House, which now has 110 the last time I checked. So that's also gaining momentum. So the reason why they're attacking that is because they know that that would actually be a real way to save net neutrality. And conspicuously enough, the Progressive Policy Institute launched this campaign the same time AT&T took out full-page ads talking about how much they supported net neutrality. And the plot thickens even further. Guess who funds the Progressive Policy Institute? The usual suspects who are against net neutrality. We're talking Comcast, Verizon, and say it with me, AT&T. <laughs> so AT&T 
we're learning now is in cahoots with a quote democratic party think tank well i don't i don't get why you call yourself a democratic party think tank because even corporate democrats in the senate like joe manchin and heidi heitkamp are on board with the congressional review act they want to nullify the fcc's vote of net neutrality now let's be honest here they're sellouts they're shills they take money from comcast and verizon but they know that liberals are pissed because Joe Manchin, for example, he voted to reconfirm Ajit Pai as the FCC chairman. So he knows we're extra pissed. He has a really progressive challenger. So he's got to make sure that he at least pretends to care about us. But I mean, the point is that all Democrats are on board with this. And this so-called Democrat think tank is against what the party stands for. So when it comes to the so-called Progressive Policy Institute, we now know everything we need to about them. They are against net neutrality because they're being funded by Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T, who collectively contribute thousands upon thousands of dollars to them. So the way that we fight back against this and give them the middle finger after they're trying to stick it to us is we call our representative and ask them to co-sponsor this bill to nullify the FCC's vote uh, to repeal net neutrality. Ask them to get on board with the resolution, the Congressional Review Act resolution that would nullify the FCC's December 14th vote. That's what we do. We have to fight fire with fire and we have to show them that we're not backing down no matter what. We're not going to just become complacent and after a while we'll forget about the importance of net neutrality. It's not going to happen. And that's a reason why I'm still talking about net neutrality to this day. I know that it, like I want to move on. A lot of us have moved on, but we have to keep the pressure on because I really do feel as though we have a chance of winning and I don't know how we're going to win. Maybe, um, you know, we can repeal their repeal of net neutrality with the Congressional, uh, Congressional Review Act. It's a long shot. Maybe we can get it struck down in the courts. I don't know. Maybe the lawsuit that states have lobbed against the FCC, 22 states now, that's going to be the one that sticks. I don't know. But we need to throw everything we can against the wall in order to see what sticks with regard to saving net neutrality. Because this is an issue that's just too important to ignore. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.